Let's talk about five of the most common fat loss myths and misconceptions, which unfortunately have been around for at least the past 40 to 50 years. Believing in these fat loss myths can either slow down your rate of fat loss or make the process harder than it needs to be. But first, if you'd like to learn more about how to burn fat and improve your fitness, start right now by subscribing to this channel and make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. This is my current weight graph. Monday through Friday, I eat less calories than I burn, while Saturday and Sunday, I eat more calories than I burn. It results in this fairly predictable zigzag pattern you see here. When I lost 125 pounds many years ago, my weight graph looked very similar for an entire year straight. But before YouTube even existed, I lost that weight graph on an old computer. Anyway, don't take my advice based on my personal weight loss. I've been a fitness trainer for about 17 years as of this video, and I've helped coach countless clients on fat loss and muscle gain. I'm a certified NSM fitness trainer, and since I wanted to specialize in helping people like me lose weight, I also chose to complete their weight loss, nutrition, and behavior change specialization programs. Let's get to the point of this video. In no particular order, let's discuss five common fat loss misconceptions that either slow down your progress or make the process more difficult than it needs to be. Number one is the idea that carbohydrates are bad or fat is bad. From about the 1960s to the 1980s, fat was considered the bad guy in our diets. Food companies were labeling everything low fat to sell more products, even if those products were loaded with sugar. After the 90s, except among athletes, cutting carbohydrates became more popular. The idea that fat loss is tied to cutting out carbohydrates or fat is still one of the biggest myths out there. It's actually not the ratio of fat or carbohydrates alone. It's the number of calories that you eat in a day. Keto can work though. I know because I tested it on myself in the past. However, keto or low carb diets like any other diet only work if you're in a calorie deficit, meaning you're eating less calories than you're burning. I didn't necessarily see any more fat loss from keto than when I reintroduced carbohydrates because in both cases, I was eating the same number of calories. Some people don't know this, but you can actually, in fact, gain weight on keto or even intermittent fasting if you're eating more calories than you burn. However, either method can be useful if they help you stick to your plan. And you don't have to count calories if it's all you can do just to watch portion sizes, but counting calories makes it far easier to make small adjustments to your diet. By the way, if you want an extreme example of why calorie count matters more than carbohydrate or fat ratios when it comes to weight loss, watch my video regarding the Twinkie diet. Number two, all calories are equal. Since I mentioned the importance of hitting your caloric target, I also want to say that not all calories are equal. Calorie count may be the most important factor in weight loss, but if you watch your macronutrient ratios, it may result in more fat loss and more muscle gain. For example, protein is used in growth and repair of your muscles after a workout. It's slow to digest and it keeps your blood sugar stable. This in turn reduces your cravings, but it also helps maintain your insulin sensitivity, which is important for fat loss. You have some flexibility in your fat and carbohydrate ratio, and it may help you get leaner faster if you manipulate your carbohydrates based on how hard you're training that day. Losing weight and losing body fat are not the same thing, so these kinds of details may actually help you if you want to avoid losing muscle. Number three, fat loss supplements. Before you turn to fat loss supplements, you should understand that very few of them actually produce results. Unfortunately, there's plenty of snake oil in the weight loss industry. Before you flush your money down the toilet, remember that no fat burner will help you lose weight without correcting your eating habits. Let's imagine some magic fat burner out there helps you lose weight despite a bad diet. What's going to happen to your weight when you come off of that fat burner? Will you stay on the fat burner for the rest of your life? It's better to skip trying to find magic pills and learn healthy eating habits. If you've educated yourself and conventional methods still don't seem to be working, it's never a bad idea to get some routine blood work and make sure everything is functioning normally. Number four, excessive cardio. Before you start pushing yourself to work out intensely for two hours a day or six days a week, you should know that most of your weight loss will come from your diet. Burning calories through exercise will help you increase your calorie deficit and hopefully the rate of your weight loss, but your calorie target has to be at least close to the mark to begin with. Start well within your limits on cardio and slowly increase your workout intensity so you don't burn out. Some people prefer long duration steady state cardio, which could be more keto or intermittent fasting friendly. Other people prefer high intensity interval training, which could be more aligned with a diet that includes carbohydrates. You can even do a combination of the two just to keep it interesting, just don't overdo it. Number five, spot reducing. Ab workouts don't burn the fat from your belly, thigh workouts don't slim your thighs. I probably talk myself out of work many times because new clients will come to me asking how to reduce the fat from these areas and I tell them the cold hard truth. It's mostly diet. You can, however, add shape to these specific areas by doing strength training exercises. You can even make your waist appear smaller, for example, by adding muscle to your shoulders, upper back, and hips. By building muscle as you lose weight, your results will be more noticeable. You can add in some cardio to burn extra calories, but those calories will come from fat stores all over your body. 
I hope you learned something from this video that'll help you in your goal to lose weight and burn fat. Check out my channel for other informative videos and workout videos, and you're welcome to leave any questions in the comments below. I'll answer them to the best of my ability and may even make a video about it. Thanks for watching.